Hello, I'm here in beautiful London with David Benayim, a fellow YouTuber who runs XL Consulting. And we are here to walk around some of the sites of London and share some of the top secret XL tricks uh, with you guys. So David, what's the first tip you're going to show us? So the first tip that I'm going to show you is clear all. No one knows this feature in Excel, but it's a way to actually delete things, not only what's the contents in the cells, but also their formatting in one click. I love this trick. Okay, great. So I want to go from this to absolutely nothing in one go. Uh, a lot of people know that you can select it, press the delete button, but then you also have to remove the colors and then remove the borders. And all of these things can be quite tedious. Um, people also generally know you can right-click, choose delete, and then this will move. But what happens is this don't move me has now moved up. So that's not what I want at all either. What I want is to select this. And then in the Home tab, very hidden on the right, you have clear with a drop-down. What does that do? You have clear all. Ta-da! That's exactly what you want. Gets rid of everything in one go. You also have very usefully here, clear formats, which keeps the data, but gets rid of the formatting. Both extraordinarily useful. Right, here we are in London with the typical traditional black taxis and some double-decker buses. So, Alan, what is your first tip that you want to share with people? Well, my first secret tip is going to be how we can hide the grid lines of Excel. So often I'm asked how you get it to look so clean around your tables and your data. So we'll look at that quick tip now. So this is a very quick tip because I am often asked when I'm delivering my training and providing my sample spreadsheets, how do I get rid of all of the lines on the spreadsheet? And they are your grid lines. So in the data range that's been used, in range B2 to D10 here, I have used the button on the Home tab to provide some borders. But then for the grid lines on the View tab, we have a simple checkbox here where we can toggle on or indeed toggle off those grid lines. On the Page Layout tab of the ribbon, we also have some grid line options here where once again we have the toggle for the screen view about whether we would like the grid lines visible or whether we'd like them not. And you have the additional option of displaying the grid lines when printed. By default, grid lines on the screen, no grid lines on the print, but you can change this to your own desires. So here we are outside the shard and David, what is your next tip you've got for us? So my next tip in Excel that I absolutely love is a hidden feature to convert from US style dates to European style dates. Let's go see what that looks like. Fantastic. So here we have our data in Excel with our dates. If you select those, you click on the data tab and then this text to columns feature. It's nothing to do with text to columns, what I'm about to do, but it's hidden away in this. Click next two times and then you get to this. In date, choose MDY, month, day, year, and then click finish. And you'll get it looking like this. Before I move on, I just want to show you this is clearly 422, 22nd of April. Same as this one, even though there's two versus four digits for year. This one um, will go from the 6th of April, if it was in day, month, year, to the 4th of June. And these two are with text, but they still work. So click on finish there and let's see it do that. All right, and final bonus tip, which is how to go from this style to this style with a keyboard shortcut, press control and that. In many keyboards, control shift three. Uh, UK keyboards, it's a bit different. There you go, done. All right, so Alan, what is your next tip? Okay, well the next one is going to be using spark lines in Excel. Uh, which is a great visual tool for your dashboards and your reports. Awesome. Let's go see it. So in this tip, we are going to look at Sparklines, 
a wonderful little visual for your Excel reports. And on screen, I have six weeks worth of sales data for these products for our food delivery service. And on this sheet, I have a wonderful looking dashboard. I'm sure you'll agree. It has nothing apart from a list on here, but maybe imagine the charts and the other visuals we have going on. In this range though, C4 to C10, I want to put a little micro chart to visualize the trend of the last six weeks of sales. So if we click on insert tab, we have spark lines about two thirds along. We have the option of the line, column or win loss spark line. The win loss spark line relies on negative values. So we won't be choosing that here. It's either line or column. I'm going to click on line. So that it prompts me for where the data is to use. Location range is already selected. It's back to the other sheet for us and I'll select all of the values that I'm plotting here. Click OK. And here are our spike lines. Seven different little line graphs. So at a glance, we can see what the last six weeks have been like for each of these products. Now, if I click on one of those spark lines, it selects them all as they work as a group. You can change that, but that's normally quite a useful thing. At the top, we have a design tab. And on here, I could change this to a column type instead. You may prefer that to the line. We also have these wonderful checkboxes where we can show important values, such as high point, and it changes the color of it. And then we also have these styles where I could choose a different style, such as this one. I could even expand the gallery and look at creating a roam by changing the settings for the sparkline color and the marker color. Or maybe just choosing one of the other built-in ones, uh, such as this one here. This one looks quite nice. And now that one is applied. And that is a quick insight, a quick intro into the wonderful sparklines tool. Okay, so David, what is the next tip you have for us? So almost everyone highlights cells based on what's in it. If text contains unpaid or waiting, they like to put that in yellow and red or whatever. But actually Excel is a feature that can do that for you automatically called text that contains within conditional formatting. Let's go see what that's about. So what people typically do when they have this thing is they will make the word pending, for example, in yellow. But the issue is when it's changed to sent, it doesn't actually change color. And the issue that we get is that you get the wrong information. What's better is something like this. When it says no instead of yes, it automatically changes to this pink red color. So how are we going to do that? Uh, select your data, go to conditional formatting. In itself, one of Excel's best hidden tricks, almost no one knows this. And by far the most useful part of conditional formatting is text that contains. Click on highlight cell rules and text that contains. And then here we can say the word, say sent, is going to be showing in green. Press OK and you are done. <laughs> That's it. Um, it is text that contains. So if you have, for example, sent now, it's still in green. And last point. You have yellow, green, and red, but if you have more, more colors, you have options that says custom formatting as well. All right, and Alan, what is your next tip? Well, my next tip, David, is the go-to special feature of Excel. Uh, so talking about things that are hidden in plain sight, here is a feature that will select cells containing elements that we can't see. Things like data validation rules, uh, conditional formatting rules, formulas, uh, so yeah, really, really useful hidden feature of Excel. In this tip, we are going to look at the go-to special feature of Excel, a feature that can select cells that contain elements we cannot see. This could be formulas, it could be conditional formatting, it can be data validation, some really useful options. 
In this first example, we will look at selecting cells that contain formulas. We cannot see the formulas in these cells on my sheet at the moment. So if I click on the Find and Select button, it is on the end of the Home tab, it presents me with what they think are popular options. And we want formulas, and there it is. So I'll click on Formulas, and immediately it selects all of those cells. So from here, I can now do what I want to do, whether that be to change its color, whether it be to unlock the cell ready for some protection, whatever it may be. For this quick demo, I will simply go to my fill color and give it a nice maybe green shade and all of that is done as quick and accurately as possible. Now, if I jump to another sheet, another quick demo in this list, I have lots of blank rows. So what I'm going to do is select cells A across to D, columns A to D, sorry. And we want to get rid of those blank rows. Now there's quite a few approaches to this, but I don't want to change its order. I don't want to filter anything out. I want to actually remove them. So I'm going to the find and select button. Now blanks is not an option. So we will go to special to open up the window with the complete list of options. Some really cool and useful stuff in here. I'm going to choose blanks and click OK. That now selects all the cells in the range that I selected that are blank. From here, delete button on home, delete sheet rows, and as easy as that, the blanks are removed and I have myself a clean data set for analysis. So David, what are your top three secret shortcuts that everybody should know in Excel? So everyone knows copy and paste and undo, but there's some really great ones that hardly anyone knows. So here's one. To go to the next sheet, you can press Control and Page Down. Control Page Up for the previous sheet. I also love using Alt Equals to do the Auto Sum feature. It automatically puts in a sum formula. But then probably my biggest one is I like bringing everything together and actually customizing your own keyboard shortcuts with a feature called the Quick Access Toolbar. All right, so let me show you some of my favorite shortcuts. If you want to go to the next sheet, you can press Control and Page Down. Control Page Up goes to the previous sheet. In Macs and certain versions of laptops, it will be Control Function and Down Arrow. Control Function, Up Arrow. Next one, if you want to get a sum very quickly, instead of typing it out, you can press Alt and Equals, and that will give you the sum like that. Point to note, if you have blanks or text in your data in the middle, it will stop there because they think that your column has stopped there as well. So best to avoid those. It goes even further if you have multiple rows and multiple columns, just select them with some gaps at the end, press Alt equals, and there it will do sums in all of your rows and all of your columns super, super fast. So those are two of them. Finally, my next tip is about getting stuff that you're not using all the time that are hidden in plain sight into your quick access toolbar. So we've shown you some really cool stuff in this video. For example, conditional formatting text that contains that is three clicks deep and most people don't know it's there or clear all. But why not get them so that you can very quickly access them here? So you can actually create your own keyboard shortcuts by adding these to the quick access toolbar. Quick Access Toolbar is this thing here. It can be above or below your ribbon. Find an item you like to use often. So, for example, let me go for Go To Special that we showed in this video and click Add to Quick Access Toolbar. It might show you that icon or it might show you the icon that you see next to it. And then very quickly it can pop up with that thing there. You can even create your own keyboard shortcuts with the Alt key. If you hold down the Alt button, you get the numbers that appear next to each item. And for me, number seven is clear all. So Alt seven is my handmade shortcut for clear all. If you right click on this, you get more options. You can do further customization steps through this. Uh, it's quite useful as well, but that's what I'm gonna show you today. Great, thanks for watching.
All right, Alan. So we're also talking about shortcuts in this video. What are your top shortcut tips that no one knew about in Excel? Okay, let me show you. Here are my three shortcut tips. Now, first up, we have the shortcuts to put in today's date. So, so useful. I use it pretty much daily myself, and that is control semicolon. And that is today's date. Saves you typing it, also ensures it is accurate. The amount of people who type the wrong date through lack of attention is higher than you imagine, and that would ruin any analysis we're going to do if not checked. Next up, we have a formula we're going to put in cell F3. Nice and easy, equals the quantity of something sold, and I'll multiply it by, let's say, £3.50 is a price of this thing we're selling. If I press enter and move back to that cell, I want to copy it to the bottom. This list is massive. So rather than drag this down, I'm going to double click the square in the corner, the fill handle. Your mouse turns from that fat white cross into that skinny black cross. Double click, shoots to the bottom, job done. Finally, back to the keyboard. We want to navigate this big list from my previous tip. Now, if I'm in the cell San Maria Anders, cell H2, I want to get to the bottom of this list. Control key and the down arrow will shoot to the first empty cell, i.e. the last one. From here, I could press the down arrow alone to move into the next vacant cell ready for some new data entry. I could all press up to move it back into that row. And let's say I want to select all the cells for this individual, maybe to remove it, maybe to copy somewhere. Control shift and the right arrow. And I've now got the entire row. It could have been 30 columns wide rather than the four that it is. And I can now once again, delete, change color, copy, whatever I want to do. If I wanted the whole table, control shift up arrow shoots me to the top. Do you want the headers? Yes, carry on. If I don't, shift and the down arrow moves me one row down. I want to get back to just column H. I don't want all four. Shift arrow left, shift arrow left, shift arrow left. I'm now back to that one. So knowing those keys, the control key with the arrows and control shift with the arrows, the first one for navigation includes shift for selection, are essential shortcuts, I think, when you're working with Excel. So, David, is there anything that you can share with us about what is new to Excel? Well, I love that Excel keeps pushing out these awesome, cool features every month, especially the Office Insiders channel to get a sneak peek about what's coming next. Something that I found recently is called Workbook Statistics. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'll show you that in a sec, but another one I want to point out is the linked data types, particularly yes. geography data types that can pull out anything from population to area to GDP or like birth rates, uh, fertility rates inside different countries, different provinces and states and cities. It's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's have a look. So here we are in Excel and we have some countries listed out here. In the newer version, you can select these countries, which just has the text in there, click on the data tab, and choose this thing called geography. What it does is it looks them up and finds out information about that country. So if you, if you click on this, it shows the card for that country with all of this information, and you can select the whole column, choose this plus button, and choose, for example, the area, or something more obscure like, uh, the forested area, <laughs> maybe the armed forces size, something like that. So if you like that, that's cool, but you can then select your data and choose another new feature in the insert tab called a map chart. So click on that and it puts it in a map, darkest to lightest, which is pretty cool. You can do this with states and with cities as well. So you can just keep sort of adding to the list of what you wanna see. And it gives you different air informations for each of these, like the, the administrative divisions, the capital for states, etc., etc. 
Another pretty cool feature, which is only in the newest versions of Excel, is in the review tab, this thing called workbook statistics. It tells me here I have three tables in this worksheet. The end of the worksheet, cells with data, number of charts, number of formulas, pivot tables, and macros in the whole workbook as well. So that's really cool. These are some of my favorite new features in Excel. Thanks for watching. And we've come to the end. Thanks for watching. So I hope you find some of those secret tips very useful uh, and incorporate them into your day-to-day -day work. Thank you for watching. Uh, please check out some of my other tips and videos on our YouTube channel and go and check out David's YouTube channel, Excel Consulting. I'll put a link in the description of this video uh, to go check that out. Thank you for watching.